This is Scott Brick, the narrator of the Dune audiobooks. I'm in the studio today, and we've just finished recording Hunters of Dune, the latest in the epic Dune saga. And I'm very pleased to be talking on the phone with the authors, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Uh, Brian, uh, Kevin, thanks, thanks very much for joining us here today. Uh, thank you, Scott. Thanks for talking to us. Well, I uh, believe it's, it's, it's our pleasure. We don't usually get to have uh, the authors in the studio with us on the phone or, or in person, so it's a, it's a treat for us. So after those, that many words and those many pages in the book, I can't imagine people want to hear more words from us, but uh, that's okay. This is, this <laughs> that is was live. Kevin, by the way. That was, yeah, this is Kevin, and, and the, the softer voice is Brian. <laughs> Well, I figured uh, pretty much every fan of, of anything on Earth always wants to know more about, you know, more details about what went into, you know, the creation of the story. So I would love to just get your impressions on, uh, on, on what it was like to work on this. Um, now, I know I read the title that immediately precedes this one um, in the Dune chronology, Chapter House Dune, when it was first released in 1986. And... I mean, I think I can speak for Dune fans everywhere when I say it's incredibly exciting to finally get to see what happened after the cliffhanger ending. Um, that's speaking as a fan. I know that the both of you are first and foremost fans of Frank Herbert's Dune series. So if it's exciting for us to get to, to read and to listen to, I can only imagine what it was like for, for the both of you to finally get to work on this after so many years. Can you share with us what it was like to finally pick this up after such a long time? Well, there, there, there's so many feelings that, that I, I have about that because Dad, as far as I knew, when, when Dad passed away, um, I only saw him using a yellow highlighter on copies of Heretics of Dune and Chapter House Dune. And um, then he passed away, and um, I knew he was, he was writing another Dune book, uh, but those, even those yellow highlighted versions disappeared. And uh, so for, for many, many years, I thought that was uh, the end of the series, and Eventually, Kevin and I uh, got together in early '97, and we started trying to figure out uh, uh, where the story was going. And that now we're continuing that because now we do know where the, where the story was going, and, and we've added to it. And uh, in the tradition of, of Frank Herbert, we've we've followed his thinking very carefully, and uh, uh, it's been a it's been a labor of love, and um, and and just a continuation of a great partnership between Kevin and me. As a huge Dune fan myself, in fact, uh, God Emperor of Dune was the very first hardcover book I ever bought. I think it was a freshman in college wow. or something. And then I bought Heretics of Dune as soon as it came out and Chapter House Dune. Uh, and then Frank Herbert passed away. And, and for years, I was uh, dismayed because I, I didn't think there would ever be the conclusion to this story. It was kind of like the mystery of Edwin Drood for, for mm -hmm. Charles Dickens. And, uh, and when Brian and I first got into contact with each other, this was one of my my main ideas. I thought, this story needs to be finished. It isn't like we're making up an artificial Dune book that nobody wanted to read. It's obvious from reading Chapter House Dune that there was supposed to be more to the story. And we started talking about this, um, I think, in 1996, as Brian said. Uh, January 97. January 97. And we realized that we needed to lay some groundwork first, and that's why we did our, our first set of prequels, uh, House Atreides, House Harkonnen, and House Carino, and then we told another big chunk of the, the Dune history in, uh, 10,000 years earlier in the Butlerian Jihad and the Machine Crusade and the Battle of Corin. And all of that was building up the whole Dune universe and, and leading up to this grand finale. And an amazing thing happened right after Brian and I started talking about the project, because nobody knew where Frank Herbert was going with it, um, we discovered Frank's final outline for Dune 7. So mm. we, we did get the roadmap. Brian, you want to talk yeah, a little bit about that? Yeah, it's just a three-page, uh, maybe two-and-a-half-page outline, but it's, um, it's, it's concise. We've, um, we've, we've added a lot, a lot to it. I mean, it was, it was more of a, an inspiration for us and kind of a general concept in a detailed scene-by-scene -scene outline. So Kevin and I have, have fleshed out the characters and the scenes. And, um, and I think uh, well, a few weeks later, I started rummaging around in my storage, and I, and I found additional general uh, uh, Dune notes that, that, uh, of my father's that, that have really helped us, too. So it's, um, it, it was kind of amazing to have these things appear right after Kevin and I met. Um, I, I wrote a little bit about that in my biography of my dad, um, how my mother was uh, so 
so much in touch with another realm, and I think she's there helping us out uh, and still guiding us to this day. Oh, that's fabulous. So you, you all had started making plans, and then essentially you found a roadmap. Well, I, I, I wouldn't say we found a roadmap. We found clues. Okay. Uh, it, it's been more clues than, than precise roadmaps. I was curious because you had you had written about this in um, uh, the Road to Dune about having found this. I was always curious how detailed uh, an outline it was, and how much room it gave you for improvisation, shall we say? Yeah, it, it wasn't that detailed. It was more general. Got it. But it, it answered the questions that we mm-hmm. needed to have answered. I mean, there's there's some big mysteries that's left at the end of Chapter House Dune and. Frank Herbert could say more in a sentence than some people can say in chapters. So mm. we were able to, to find what we had to do in order to write the rest of the story. And, uh, in fact, it's, it was such a huge story that was kind of sketched out in this outline that it took us uh, either one 1,500-page book to tell it or two much smaller 700-page books. So that's why Hunters of Tune is the, the first half of the grand climax. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that you previously you've collaborated on on seven Dune titles. Could you describe uh, your writing process, uh, the way that you worked for the for those first seven, and then tell us whether things might have changed at all while you were working on this one? I'm, I'm just curious if, I mean, I know that you you never previously tried to I- imitate Frank Herbert's style. You know, you created your own unique voice. But I'm curious if, if because this was a continuation, a direct continuation of Chapter House, if there was ever any any point during the writing of it that you found yourselves, you know, leaning towards Frank's style perhaps a bit more. I, I think subconsciously we have all along. Kevin and I were both inspired by him, um, and um, Frank Herbert was a teacher to me. Um, both Bill Ransom and um, and I are the only two writers that have actually sat side by side with Frank Herbert. Um, as basically, we Bill and I were students uh, as we worked on books with him. Uh, but Kevin and I have um, evolved into. In fact, we did this pretty early. We recognized what our different strengths were. Um, our writing style, our syntax, and all that's very similar, which is helpful. But our our strengths are different. And so for all the books except for one, and I'll just leave that one to the fans to guess, um, Kevin and I actually played to our strengths on the first draft. 